All right, welcome back guys. It's instructor Phil here and what I'm doing is we're doing a couple more paint overs on student thumbnails for today, okay? So one of the things I wanted, I was working on Adrian's uh, last class. I'm gonna try to go a little bit more faster on these. So I'm looking at this one. If you remember this thumbnail, one of my concerns was that your thumbnails felt very bright still, which could work for different times of day. But for this one, one of the first things I would wanna do is drop that right on top of it, okay? just to darken it up a little bit. However, on this, I'm concerned because I don't have much areas to light in terms of I don't have a light. Um, I have a little bit of what could be a lantern on top of these bricks back here on the wall. But my other thought, so that that's something I could light or I could add a light in here or I could put a house in the back. So what I'm gonna do really quick, since we happen to be talking about this, is let me get the right layer here, is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna swab this color right here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a little house back here. So I'm gonna do it like this, go to 100%. There, I have a little house right there. And then what I'm gonna do is transform, scale it down a little. And I'm gonna get it down to, let me see, I might stretch it a little bit. Get it right about here. Now, I don't have your layers, so that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. So, which is okay, but I'm gonna try to get around that really quick. I'm going to drop the value down a little bit lighter. And what I can do, let me see if this will work. If I'm planning to put the house about right here, let's say. I rotate it in about there, okay. I'm going to see if this is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my selection wand, okay, which for some reason I cannot get my selection wand to work earlier. There, I selected that right now. Do you see that? And then since I have that selection, I'm going to come back up here select the house where it's at and then I'm just gonna hit delete and see now it's sort of put the house behind there a little bit okay uh, if that makes sense but it has a little bit of that white glow for it but that's okay I'm gonna see if I could lighten the house up a little bit more about there so it feels like it's in there and then I'm gonna come in here really quick and I wanna I need to add a little bit more base to it um, I sort of wanted to put this other I gave you guys these houses. I have some of these other little cornices and houses, which reminds me, this is something I maybe need to do. I need to spend a Saturday and create some funky looking house designs. So let me put another layer here. And, oops. Get that same color. I'm gonna get that in like that. And what I'm gonna do, let me transform that. I wanna scale it down a little bit, stretch it out. So I get a cool silhouette of part of that house in there. Hit OK, and then I'm going to lower it a teeny bit, and then what I'm going to do is merge it back here with this layer, and now what I should have done is I want to come in here and paint a little bit of a base in there, since I don't have your layers, so I'm going to do that super quick here. I'm going to come in here and paint like a hill that's right in there. I'm going to come back, take my wand, select this layer that's underneath, come back to here, hit erase, boom. There, now I sort of have the house in there, okay? So to me, the benefit of doing that is that now I have, uh, next thing I was gonna do is put a light pole or two in here, okay? Because now I can light the house. I can put windows on and have light coming from there and have that coming out being really dark. So that's one option. So let me add in the light poles real quick. So let me go back to my brush. And I think I had light poles saved in here. I do, but I don't know if I have the ones I want. I used to have a collection of, there. there's a couple, yeah. That guy's pretty cool right there. That one's like spooky area type of French light post. So what I'm going to do is see if I can't maybe blend this in to the midground here. So let's try that again. Let me go to this layer, okay? And I'm going to go to my color option here. I'm going to take that gray. I'm going to imagine a light pole back in here, if that's possible. About that tone of gray, okay? And then what I'm going to do is the same thing. Come back to the layer down below, take my wand, select that, come back, hit there, hit delete. Voila, now it's blended into the background there. Okay, and I might put another, so something I didn't mention to you guys on your thumbnails is sometimes you have to think about things that are going to emit light because we have directional light. We also have the moon. So there are a couple of different variants that we can do. So I, I don't mean to change your composition by putting that light in there, but it's something I might, Adrian's like, damn you, touch my work. No, 
So I sort of like that. I'm gonna come back into that layer two and I'm gonna put another one back in here, back there, gonna make it about, that feels like scale would probably be pretty good. Let me see if I can get it to fit like right in there. Okay, and now that I have that there, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna to go to this other layer and I'm gonna select that. Oh, it's on the same layer. So that's fine, I'll just leave it. That way I could light it. So I'm gonna compress all this now and commit to it. So I'm gonna bring this in here. I'm gonna bring this down. I'm gonna merge these together. Oops. It's on multiply. I'm gonna merge them all the way down together. Boom. So now they're all in one layer, okay? It makes it a little, I like to commit to something to work from it. So what I'm gonna do real quick here is I'm not gonna to try to get into too much rendering, but let me just show you. I'm gonna look at my time in maybe five minutes here, three different ways I could like this, okay? So I'm gonna put a layer above it and I'm thinking of different options here. So here's option number one. Let me come back in and let's grab a, a fuzzy brush here. So I'm gonna start, option number one is what if this light post is on and then the outer light post is on and then there's some lights on in the house, okay? So I already know from doing this numerous times that I want this light to be somewhat bright right here. So I'm gonna come in here and hit it with just like a, like a bright zero, like boom, that light is just on. And then I'm gonna come back in here, I'm gonna dull a little bit of spread coming out of that light. And then I'm just gonna sort of take my brush, come in here and be like, bam, hit that like that. And then I might hit it a little bit lighter, like so. So that's my light on in the foreground, okay? I'm gonna save time, select all, copy, paste. So what I did is, I didn't do it. The, okay, let me delete that layer. Something weird happened there, let's try it again. Because since I have it in there once right now, and I have some weird brown thing up here, I don't know how that got there. Hold on, get back in there, Photoshop. There it goes. Okay, so let's try that again. Let's do it with a the marquee then. Select that about there, copy, paste, there. And I copied and pasted it just now because I can come back here and I could shrink it down. And then I could put it right in here in this other light, which is right about there. But it's way too bright, right? And I have the edges from the square around it, which is fine. Because once I dole that down, like about so. I can then take my eraser. If I hit eraser and come back in like a 10%, I'm just gonna come around and blur some of these edges in here. Pretend that I have that other secondary light on there, okay? So the next thing I might do is I might come over and try the same thing sort of in the back, is I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna add another layer. And I'm just gonna imagine one or two lights on in the house, okay? Now I'm doing this on a separate layer because it's really hard sometimes to get the lights to be perfectly the way that you want them. So I'm gonna put a little dot here. Maybe there's like a little rounded element here. And what's cool by doing this is I actually can make the house look like it's, it has multiple layers too. I can put one down there for like an entry level type of thing. There might be another one here, another one there. So that actually controls part of the perspective. Now what I'm gonna do is come back in, take my fuzzy brush really fast, and be, go down to like a one, actually even like a zero four, and I'm just gonna go like boom, and tap a little bit on that so you can see the light sort of spreading out a little bit, okay? Like that, and then I can go in and go a little bit brighter. Now, the fact that that's in the back is cool because now I could drop down the light, the opacity of it, so I can get it much smaller. So right there in a couple minutes, that could be a light option for you. Okay, you could go front lantern, middle lantern, and back to the house, okay? That would be an option. But you would wanna make sure in terms of atmospheric perspective that you had that fade off happening in terms of the light getting lighter as it recedes. Does that make sense? Okay, because if you come in here, and this is common usually with students on the first projects, is they'll make this lamp light like boom, super bright, competing against the one in the front, and then what you'll do is they'll come back to this light and they make this super bright. And now what happens with that? They're, they're all competing against each other. So you have numerous light sources that are in competition with each other and nothing's winning. So in atmospheric perspective, what is closer to you is gonna be brighter. 
and then as things recede, they're going to get lighter. So if I hit Command Z and come back here like that, that feels a little bit better to me. Now, if for some reason you want to take out, let's say there was a staging element in here and you had characters walking up the pathway to the front yard, right? Let's say the characters were in the midground. In that particular case, I would come here and take off the front light and then I would probably punch up the middle light a little bit more because you're going to have characters on that road. Okay, I then would come over here with my brush and put a little bit more of a funky haze on there, like so, and then I would leave the back. Okay, so that would be another option. If you didn't want to do that and you decided, hey, I want my focal point to be the house, then I would come in here, I would punch up part of that house, and then I would come in here and I would basically start rendering then you know, where that light is hitting. And you have all these different options to do because you have lots of elements back in there. So if I come in here with my brush really quick, I go down to like one, I'm gonna imagine, hey, I'm gonna have light hitting up in here. I'm gonna have light coming down here on the side. I'm gonna have some light back here, maybe something here. I might even have light look like it's coming out, zero five, from under the, the gate here, sort of spreading out, right? creating like a radial type of light source going over part of that pathway, right? I'm gonna have some light maybe coming over here on the side of that hill, maybe up on the side of that tree, okay? Maybe on the sides back here. So that's getting into rendering now, but you see how that composition is already starting to develop? Okay, it's changing and all I'm doing is thinking about, hey, you know, I have all these lights on up here. Maybe I really make that front door like it's glowing, you know? And it's just boom, it's just spreading across here. Like so. And then as that light's spreading, it's getting, oops, let me go back to like a zero three. It's getting softer and it's spreading out on part of this location and breaking up, hitting the ground at different parts, okay? And then maybe that light, it's coming out there and it's so darn intense coming out from there. That it might even come up here, I might even see like a dark spot versus light spot on part of the house facades because all that light's coming up. Actually, that looks pretty spooky, doesn't it? Especially with Halloween coming around the corner. And maybe you have, maybe there's a path that goes to part of this, and the path curves a little. Maybe it looks like that path comes down back this way and then comes in between these tombstones. Okay, something like that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hide that. Always put paths on a separate layer. Go back to brush, come in with a, that's the brush is fine I have. I'm just gonna lightly just sort of come along here, punch up and maybe a little bit of that. Let me go to zero four and then get part of that path in there, just sort of coming off, and then it fades in, blends off sort of back in here, and maybe a little bit of that path catches a little bit of light and comes back in this way, okay? Like that. So that's another light option, right? And then if you wanted to, just since I'm doing this, you know, pretty efficiently and fast, right? Look, I just put light in there, and if I want to really create some other contrast back there, step one at the very, very end, come in, with some type of a cool looking cloud, if you like. Now, what I like to do with clouds is a lot of the clouds I have are on a jitter rotation and a sensitivity rotation. So they come out, you'll see if I go to move and put down, you see this changing pattern, see that? So sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna hit, so I'll do it on another layer and I might come in at like 70, go like, uh-oh, oops, don't do that. Don't forget you had a, uh, hit deselect. Now I'm on a different layer. So now I could come in like this and then I might go a little bit brighter and then I might come down here and get a, bit, a little bit lighter. 
So then, since it's on another layer, I hit transform. See, and I can squash it, and then I can make it smaller, and I could get it to be like haze right above part of my image right there. And if there's something that I don't like, I go back to eraser, like 10%. If it's a little too bright there, I just come down and I dole that part of the cloud off. See how quick I did that? So it's on a separate layer, right? That cloud. So I have a little bit of fog over there. Okay, maybe I duplicate that layer really quick. All right, I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to transform it. I'm going to flip it in the opposite direction so, and maybe scale it down so it looks a little bit different. Maybe I put a little bit of that in front right there. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to paste. Oops, my bad. So let me duplicate that layer again. I thought I copied and pasted it, but I forgot I duplicated it. There. So now I'm going to bring this one up a little bit closer. And this is if I'm working on something in a real extreme sort of deadline and I have to get something done quickly. You know, I'm not going to go in there and paint every cloud separately. Why? I don't need to. Look, I'm going to enlarge this so it looks a little bit larger here in the foreground. And then watch. If I want to change that cloud a little bit more, okay, if I want it a little bit brighter because it's closer to me, right, maybe duplicate it. Remember, don't go too bright. That's a little too bright because if it's too bright, it's going to pull my contrast away from the house, right? So I have to get it down just a little bit like that. That's cool. I have two layers here that are working. And then I'm going to merge those two layers. Okay. And then what I might do is I might come in here and I take the stamp tool right now and hold on, get a little bit smaller. And I might grab part of that and say, hey, I want to put some of this over here. And then that's a little too bright. So I'm going to put my stamp down to about um, 30% and maybe make my brush a little smaller. So maybe I stamp a little bit of the cloud right there. Okay, maybe I just come over, maybe I stamp part of that and put some of it over here like that. There. So I'm quickly done. And look, that's all on one layer. So I can squash it, string, you know, bend it, put it sort of here in the foreground if I want. And I could even blend it in a little bit more. I could even blur it too. Remember, there's you have your filter options, right? So if I want to put more of a blur on it so it doesn't look so detailed, I can go to Gaussian Blur. And then I could select it right now and see, I can just come in here and make it look a little bit more misty like. And by doing that with the other cloud being a little bit more realistic in the back, it keeps my eye focused on the house. So here, I'm going to leave it at Gaussian blur. I have a radius of five, hit OK. So do you see your eye still goes to the back. Now remember when detail goes backwards, it actually gets a little blurry and, and fuzzy. So I could also do the, the, the opposite where I leave that a little bit richer and then I come in here and if I grab that layer which let me just double check layer 27 and what was the one I think 26 nope 27 27 copy yeah let's see this one here that's front okay so I'm going to merge these two and let's say I leave the clouds in the front the way they are and then the ones in the back I come in I go to blur I put them on a Gaussian blur and Look, I already put it at a five and see how they're there, but they're a lot fainter. Hopefully you can see on that monitor because earlier today when I did a demo in character design, the colors were just totally off on the monitor as compared to mine. So hopefully it's not that bad in value. So that would be one light study, right? Okay. So a couple, we just went through that really quick and we did a couple different options. Okay. So I still could come back light from the front. It's up to you on how you feel the piece is going to work best. The next thing I would do is come in here and I'd render up around the trees. I try to get the brick wall and all that stuff in the back to match where the light's coming from. Okay? So that would be that one. And um, let me save this really quick. File, save. Okay. And then I'm going to close it. And then let's come over here. Let's take a look at somebody else's here. Um, let's see whose this was. Always oh, opens there. That's yours. Okay. All right, let's uh, dive into this and see what we can put in here. Um, you already have a, a, a pretty rich darkness happening in here. So for me, once I look at your piece, I almost immediately want to go in and sort of backlight what's furthest away. You know what I mean? Like I want to put lights on the building in the very back there and make that sort of pop. Um, you still could put a light in the foreground. It's up to you. But you have these cool structures all in the back, you know? So, you know, part of me wants to go in there and just like take something like this and light that up and then get some of this reflective light around there. So let's do one really quick, okay? 
put a couple layers up there. So I'm going to start here. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a marquee like this to make it look like it's a more window based structure. Let's say you had something like that. Okay. And I'm on another layer here. So I'm just going to go over them right now. Brush and let's hide them. There. So get them pretty punched up like they're in white. Okay. I'm going to come back here, hit D hit deselect. Okay. And punch them up like there's a light on. Drag out a little bit of light coming off from there. I put these separate so I can dull down the other ones underneath it if I want. Or erase a little. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that's my light. I'm going to come back here, take eraser. I'm going to erase just a little bit of that, get that to blend in a teeny bit more. Let's combine them together. <coughs> and I like to dull it down just a little bit like that because then I don't ever want things to be in pure white, you know? I can come back into that and then add a couple dots of pure white where I really want the eye to go. So now it's a lighter gray. So there, I have some light up in there that's, that's working okay. And what I might do is if that light's really bright, it might be coming down hitting parts of this hill. Okay? Um, heck, if you wanted to in this, I almost feel like putting, I almost feel like coming in here and doing this. Let's take a moon. Where are my moons? There's a moon. Because you could almost get away with uh, having a moon up behind it. Like that. And then... Erase this. Get that moon in there. And then I not only do I want to drop the opacity of the moon, have it to fade off, see it drops it behind the house a little bit. But then on top of that, I might blur it a little bit. So come back in, blur, go to Gaussian blur. Maybe not that much, maybe somewhere about there. Okay? So it's a little blurred, and that way we're still going to the house itself, right? And then I could still come in then and punch up. So if I want to do really quickly, I might come in here then, raise the opacity of those lights a little bit more. Hold on, I have the wrong layer. Something like that, okay? You see how the lights are a little brighter than the moon? A lot of times people put up a moon and they make the moon super bright. Moons can be light gray. I've seen them light gray. So then I might come in here real quick and think about I have the size of the tree. Maybe I have some bushes in here, whatever. I might have some parts of this hill that are getting hit by that. Maybe there is part of a path. There's something that leads up there. And I have some of these other elements here. Okay, and then I have even part stuff around here, around that house. Okay, maybe that's also part of a path. All right, so hit H, come back in with my brush real quick. All right, and uh, come in here, gonna go really light, like a zero four. Then I'm just gonna start brushing some highlights hitting off there, blending in lightly, just like that. See how that pops it just a little bit back there? Just gets the ground to match what's happening with the light a little. See how my little selections just look like rocks or bushes of some kind? Just right up here on the right. And then I'm going to sort of see if I can't find that little bit of that path. Bring it out a little bit more. Going back there. Okay. Now once I get that, I have some 
if you guys look, I'm not sure if I gave you these, but I do have some bushes in here that do some, I used to have some other ones, tree canopies. Some of these under the tree do like canopies and little bushes, right? So some of these are also like little dust particles. So sometimes you can take something like this, and if you have a tree, you can come on top of it and put a couple highlights like, hold on, let me get a little bit smaller. You have to erase a little. But if I'm imagining there's a, like a bunch of little bushes or something over here. Okay, and I get that down. Let's just drop the opacity immediately on it. And then if I hit erase, I can come in here and erase at 40. Make it look like little highlights of that tree are getting hit there. Does that make sense? blend these in a little bit so they're not so bright. So then I can make it look like the ground's getting hit and there's also rocks or shrubbery or other little elements back there getting light on it too. Okay? So that's how I would sort of, to me, that would be a good pass on that. And the brighter I make these lights, then the more that light would shine down part of that trail and hit part of these other trees. Okay? All right, so that'd be sort of one pass there. Let's come over here. Um, I'd probably do that for most of yours as I light it from the back. Okay, but if for some reason, what if you decide that the moonlight's over here and you decide to put a little nugget of moon right here? Let's try that one real quick. Merge all these together. Let me create some new layers. So on this guy, let's take, uh, what do I do with my moon brush? Moons. Here we go. So maybe we take a moon here. I'm going to come over. It's on another layer, right? Oops, brush. And I'm in a white. Say so I put that up there. Okay. Let me rotate it a little bit more so it looks like it's out there. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is you have the layers, I don't, so I'm going to quickly do this. I'm going to pretend I'm just going to erase some of this around the tree. Get it to, to blend in there a little. There. So let's say our moon's back there. And what I'm going to do is also, I don't like things super sharp all the way in the background. It doesn't quite feel right to me. So I'm going to go down to filter. Let's go to blur. Let's go to Gaussian blur again. I'm going to drop it down just a little bit about there. Okay. Now what I could do, if that's my moon, I could pretend now the light's coming from this direction and it's hitting the facade of all of these. Okay. So I could come in here and start selecting like the facade of this wall. It's going to get hit. Maybe part of that wall. It's going to get hit. And sheet, pretend you have another wall here. Sort of going back, maybe it has these little corner to that wall, and then maybe there's even another little corner here that goes back that way. So I get those in there like that. Let's hit hide. Let's come back to our other layer here. Let's go to brush. Okay. back to your moon. I'm going to make your moon a little bit brighter. It looked like there's quite a bit of moonlight coming off there. And then I'm just going to go in and manually just sort of paint in. So I need to get some blends in here. And that's a little too hard edged. There. Let's 
the down. Sometimes the, la the lasso tool works pretty good. Sometimes it doesn't blend as easy, you know. Shouldn't go crooked that way. Just trying to get that to sort of fade in a little bit. So I'm just thinking if your moon's there, light's coming from that side, right? It might be hitting part of those elements. Um, to be honest, I don't like that as much now that I'm doing it because I feel like your castle doesn't have enough shape or definition into it to get those reeds on some of those corners, or I'm just doing it too fast. If I went in there a little bit more time, pencil down and get some really uh, minute details in there, it might work a little bit better than me just quickly going over it with a brush, you know? Or you can have your castle on, okay? Another option you could do is what if you had like a lantern and so it was back here behind the scene and it was coming here into the foreground uh, from the midground. So imagine if you had maybe something like this. Let's see if I can pull this off. Um, I had these light ray brushes that someone gave me once. They're okay. They actually come out really bright, but let me see how they look. Actually work pretty good sometimes. What if someone had a flashlight? Oops. What if there's a flashlight on coming from the back side here somehow? Like that. So let me scale it down a little bit. So we might see light coming like that, but the light's not going to be casting over this right here. This is all going to be erased. There'll be some overspray of like particles. There. There. See how that feels like there's a light now behind it? Maybe someone's casting something. So let's come down to another layer. Maybe I come down in here and there's like little rocks and other elements. Part of a pathway or something back in here. And then this is where the fun could start to happen is Part of this could come over this hill like this, okay? Okay, so if I hit H right now, hide those. I'm on a separate layer. Let's come back here and go to this brush here. So the light's casting this way so it's a little bit brighter as it hits some of these little rocks, it sort of lightly fades itself out, right? And blends into part of the environment. And then maybe it's a little bit, a little brighter. Then it comes over this hill. And as that light starts to come over, it just lightly fades into the ground a little bit like that. So it'd be a little bit brighter. I'm going to hit deselect now. And I'm just going to try to blend this into itself. A little bit back in there. So you see how that light looks like it's hitting part of those rocks now? Because that's the brightest area. So now I could come back in and I could start thinking about, well, what if we quickly said, you know, hey, we have this part of this structure here. It's going to get hit. Okay, so hide again. Lightly come in here. Maybe I'll punch just the corner a teeny bit so there's a, like a little bit of reflective light on there. And then just sort of fade down the light hitting from here. Again, here, that corner, a little bit stronger. And the light just sort of fades itself down on part of that. OK. 
Okay. All right, so now I could go in, having that being my determined light source, and I can lightly build up from this spot here and then render out the rest of this, you know? So if I come back to it, I might have... a bunch of other little elements around part of this trail. They're getting hit. Maybe it's just a little bit brighter on the trail itself. Heck, I could even come in and see if I wanted to, I could put the shape of a light. I could actually even do this. Let's try this real quick on another layer. Okay. Brush. So what I'm gonna do is take that shape, hit it just like a flashlight was hitting it, a little bit brighter, then fade it off a little bit lighter like that, and then take that, transform that, scale it down bring that down into here stretch it out a little bit more bring it a little bit like here grace see how that feels like now that's maybe part of the flashlight itself casting a little hitting the ground it's still a little tight so I can go back to blur filter Blur gallery, okay, and oh, cancel, wrong one. I want to get some lost edges on there. Yeah, see there, see how it spread out the light now by putting that blur on it just a little bit. I'll show you the difference. There it was, ready. I'm gonna hit Command Z. See how tight it was? It looked a little bit too fake like that, right? Now I blurred it out a little bit, and there it is. So I have that. Now I could go in, and here I'm just going to draw it on red because I want to get to everybody else's too, right? So what would what would I do next? Um, where's my draw brush? So I would come in here. I'd think about maybe expanding this light a little bit more up in this direction towards, hold on. Okay, what's going on? Why is it deselect? So I might, hold on, what's on brush 100%? Oh, that's why, duh. Well, I went to brush, for some reason it went to eraser. So I might, with that light spreading, I'm gonna think about how this light is spreading more back this way. It's gonna hit up part of that tree. It's gonna hit up part of these tombstones a little bit, right? They're gonna be a little bit lighter and I might even see some of that light come back here um, between part of that road, okay? Then you could come back in here and you can still put a couple of these little windows on like someone's home and have them much lighter because they're in the back. And then you could put a couple clouds on it for atmosphere and then I would leave it. Okay, and I think that would be a good little piece. It looks like there's a flashlight on and somebody's walking from the side. Okay, important thing is to me is like what's happening right here. That looks, it's becoming realistic and it's making sense because it's now, what was the silhouette now has a light side and a dark side. So it's turning itself in form. And we're just coming in and taking advantage of what we already know. And we're just adding in like, hey, we're going to put a little bit of light here, maybe a couple little highlights there. Maybe I have some really soft, faint light coming over there. And voila, now my foreground really pops. And it really, you know, and even here where this light is, I might have, um, I'm going to have a little bit of spread light. It's coming off that hill. It's lightly like coming here and just, oops, way too much spread there. Lightly spreading itself out over like that. Just a little bit coming over, hitting some other rocks and other elements like that. And now I get a really convincing light source in my scene. Okay, does that help you out, Matt? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so I hate all, doing all the red, but that just helps you think about other areas to light now, you know? Okay, very good. And let me hit save real quick. All right, and let's go here. Let me open up another one really fast. Let's go to Mark. So Mark, one of the problems when I'm looking at yours here is similar to what Adrian has. 
your your values are light, which isn't a bad thing. I think he went to the bathroom. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. Well, Mark, when you get back here, we'll talk <laughs> about him. You can watch the video, right? So, Mark. Yes, Phil? No. So, the problem is, look at his values right there. His values are like at 70 right now, right? So, which could work if it was daytime, but cemetery at night, I mean, cemeteries light better, being moody, being creepy, having a moonlight on, a building light on, whatever. So, the first thing I would do is I look at this, as I come up here, and I'm going to drag a box right over, not that box, a uh, square box, right over on top of it, and I'm going to fill it with a, probably another about 20% gray, okay? Edit and uh, fill, and that's foreground color, okay? I'm gonna come back here and, nope, keep that on and put this on a multiply. And that right there is already, to me, working a little bit easier in the way that he could light this. It makes it a little bit darker, so let's look at the difference. That's where he was. See the brightness in it? It's like, ah, it's super bright. Even with this, I'm almost tempted to go back to levels and come in here and darken up a little bit more like that, okay? So then I could come in, and if I were to, let me see, if I were to do his, let's do a couple real quick here. Let's say one, let's try to make this really fast. Mark will get back and like, you did mine already? So um, I like the idea of the light poles sort of being on. So I was just wondering, okay, what's happening here? Let's go back to brush, selected you, and cap locks is on, that's why. Cool. Now I have this. Let's go to about a 50. What I'm going to do is punch a center light right about there and I come back in here and make one a little bit lighter. Like that. And now I might come back here and go to about a 20, let's say. Make that light look like it's on and this one is a little bit duller. Okay, and if I did that, now I'm going to come like directly just to draw on it in red, right? We're talking about a light source here. Um, I'm going to come back in red and say, okay, Mark. You have your light emitting from here. It's a radial light source, so that means it's going to emit downward like this. So it can almost come down here and almost dig like a little bit of a circle around here that's going to be in shadow because the rest of this is going to have light sort of casting out from there. Now, he does have a panel box. There are some boxes, I've seen them before, in like Ireland and England that have metal on one side, so the light casts in one direction. So that's up to him. If that's the case, I might have more light hitting here, 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 and on this area, and very, very light, dull light hitting over here because there's not an open window here. If that, if Mark wants that to be an open window, I would then come back in and make some of the light over here the same. So if that's a number two to a, a number two to a three, this would be a number two to a three over there as well, okay? If that makes sense, okay? So what I'm gonna do really quick using the selection tool I'm just gonna play with it real fast. And there's our light, so I might come back here. Come on, go to selection tool. There it goes. Sorry, it's the lag of the recorder. I might select part of this, come in here, get part of that. Mark, we're on yours. All right. It's all right, I was looking for you, and then uh, Paco pointed out that you went to the restroom real quick, which is fine. So, you'll hear me talking to you in this video more, okay? So what I'm doing is if you have a light there and a light in the back, okay, what you have to decide is if that panel right there is going to be black. Some lanterns have that. If you have that mark, then you're not, you're not going to have nearly as much brightness over here from that light, okay, because you have a black panel behind it. You will have some light back here. It just won't be as strong. The intensity will be dulled down quite a bit. In fact, you won't even have as much areas lit, okay? So and even here, I'm going to have some stuff hitting this way. Might have some more rock or cobblestone in your road there. Okay, something about like that. Then I'm going to hit hide. Let's go back. I'm on a separate layer. Let's grab that soft brush. And now I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to start with a 05. Oops, not in red. That's weird. Okay, even a 03. It's really light. 
come down and get a little bit of value turning part of these objects here. So a little bit of haze. But then when we get over here, I'm going to try to push them up a little bit more. They're a little bit brighter. Part of that light's coming down and just hitting some of these objects. I like to get something like that. This just feels nice. And then I could smooth it out and pencil it in a little bit more, you know, because it still has that hard edge in there. Sometimes I don't like that hard edge. So um, two methods of thought here. I could go in and blur it a little bit, and it'll blur the edges. Or uh, I could erase a little bit more, OK? Different ways to work. So there's a positive and a, and a, a positive subtraction method and like a negative subtraction, meaning that right now, if I were to come into this and I could take my eraser, I can go around and, let me get the right eraser there. And I could lightly start to erase, oops, that wasn't lightly. I could blend some of these ends in going like this, okay? Like so. I could fade this in a little bit more. I could paint in a little bit more on the stone and the, some of the details up on that road and make it into more of a rendering. Okay. Now, what I could also do, another thing, is what if I doubled that layer, make it really bright like that, okay? And I might go to blur, go to Gaussian blur, and there, now it doles it down a little bit. Maybe somewhere about there in the middle, just a teeny bit. And then I could come back in here and I could erase a couple little spots, get things to blend in maybe a little bit better. I'm trying to get that feel of light coming across, hitting part of my objects in here. And then once I get that certain way that I might want it, I'm then going to come in with my brush and then try to paint in some little details and render a little bit more. You know, like I might with that light being right here, I might have like a nice little highlight up in here and part of my stone that fades off a little bit more. There might be another little stone here to get hit. I might have a little bit more of a sharper highlight on the edge here. And the grass might get hit there a little bit more. So see how I'm just starting to render a little bit more down here on the, the pathway. And the other thing too is I haven't done any darks yet. I can come back in here and really start coming in here and pulling up some positive and negative. Make that look like it's a pathway that's got lots of little dark values in between these cobblestones, right? Where it's road meets, meets dirt. Okay, this is the rendering part that I'm not going to be able to do in the demo because it just takes a long time. It takes I could spend 20 minutes on that road and make it look like a, a beautifully lit road from that right, that light, right? I could go in there and really render some of that out, but sometimes I just try to do it a little bit more expedited in a demo. Okay. Here I can even add more shadows. Even in yours, Matt, I didn't even really add shadows. I was just messing with the lights.
Don't go to pure black. But anyway, you get that idea right there? That would be one pass for what I could do over there, okay? It's just one layer, just adds a lot more sensibilities to it. So I know we don't have characters in our environment. Um, my thing with you guys putting characters in your environment is that if you haven't had a good character design class or you don't know what you're doing, if you make your character look too goofy or off-centered, it doesn't make the environment look right. So what we can do is if you want, try lighting it like that. If you want to introduce your own character, do it on a separate layer. And you can tell a little bit of a, a little bit more of a narrative. Because technically, how I learned a lot about lighting scenes had to deal with the pathway of animation. Because when I was given a scene um, working at studios, there was a description on it that said, yeah, the characters are walking down this pathway to this location. Or a character is hanging from a particular tree branch. So then they'd ask me to do a tonal study. I would have to gear that tonal study around what we call the line or the, or the area of animation, the line of animation where the characters would later be animated. Okay, of course, you want your focal point to be on where your characters are gonna be. Technically, we're, we, since we don't have characters in here, we're looking at our pieces just trying to make them feel realistic because we started from quick thumbnails, okay? So imagine coming in here, you know, one or two other things that I might add in here. I like the, um, let me find, I have this one brush that does dust. Sometimes these lights have dirty screens and they have a tendency to emit like, um, let me see what I can find here. What's this thing? I forget what brush this is. This does a little bit of that dust. See what that does a little? Just adds a little bit of a, I don't know how to call it exactly. A little bit of like dust in the light type of thing. We get that in light conditions all the time. Especially if you've ever seen cold air, cold air that's like dewy and there's light coming, it picks up the little particles of the moisture in the air and you get some of that. It's just a way to stylize your piece a little bit sometimes. And of course, I wanna just immediately come down in here, you know, and I just wanna add another layer since we're up here in the foreground and just be like, you know, back up there a minute I like that first one I want a little bit brighter not that yeah I have some people that come back and they're like yeah I put clouds in it and I'm like yeah you did but you made it too bright nice soft stretch them out get them to fade in you could use them to your advantage but you just have to make sure there's a little bit of fade there's a little bit of fade and delineation in everything. When things are soft and they fade in, I don't know, they just tend to work a little bit easier. Copy and paste that over here. Transform it. Actually, it doesn't look too bad right there. It looks a little bit different than the other because we're seeing the other side to it. Like that. I'm going to put a blur on that one so it doesn't look as noticeable. There we go. There, so you see how I'm already, I'm just working on the foreground. And I've just put about 10 minutes into it and I have a pretty cool piece that's starting to work, right? So I'd go back in there with that light. You might have a little bit more back in here. And if you want to, you can come back in here. Absolutely. You could just say... I put another layer up there, you could pretend like in the very, very back, you have some type of window up here. Make it a little bit smaller. Maybe you have a, oops. Maybe you got a little light there. Oops, don't do that. Come on, go back, Photoshop. Sorry, the recorder is eating it up. So now I have a couple lights on so we know where we're going, but they're not too bright to compete with the light, okay? All right, so it's up to you guys. You guys light, light them on what feels best to you. I'm just giving you a quick demo. All right, good stuff here. Um, it's fun, man. I just want to keep going. 
Okay, but I need to move to somebody else. Let me save yours. Okay, that way I can give them back to you with what I did in them. And Paco, you're next on here. So the same thing, yours are really nice. Uh, they're a little lighter in the back, so it almost feels like a little bit of a day time, which is still very doable because you could still, man, I look at this one here on the right and, oops, what happened there? Okay, let's try that again. Sorry, see how it went black like that? That's the recorder memory. Let me stop it real quick so it doesn't crash. All right, so one of the first things I noticed was that barn. That I shouldn't say barn. I meant barn roof of the church that has that sort of tilt on it. To me, that's really cool because I'll show you. The first thing I see in there is this really cool angle that could happen. So even if this was sort of a day shot, I am tempted to put a little bit more value on there. Okay. Uh-oh. Not you. Go away. Edit. Yeah, I just made it a teeny bit darker. That's all. Okay. So let me come up. Put a couple layers. Let me see if what I pull off here. So what I thought of doing was... On this this is the shape I'm seeing out of there which is really attractive to me I'm gonna use a straight edge on that one is the fact that you have part of the cross here sorry I need to zoom in a little bit more I can't see what I'm doing Let's go back to lasso in here, there. And then this is the shape I could see in there. See how the roof goes like to here? And then you have this whole facade there. And then you have a little edge, and you might even have part of that side of it going like this way. Just like that. So you have that shape, that negative shape for light to hit, which is pretty cool because you can use that any way you want. And if you make it a little bit darker, and then you have the thought of moon or light coming from that side, that allows you to pretty much come in here and um, illuminate this whole right-hand side of the field, right? Because look, you have, you could have like other little, oops. There we go, zero percent. You can have other parts. Okay, do you select? Okay, why isn't there no brush? Go back to brush, that's why. Went there in eraser mode by accident. So here, you could have other little bushes and other little elements around there that are also getting part of those highlights, right? And you could have a little bit of a, it could be like a pathway that leads to part of that, that barn in there, right? That, could, that gets hit, okay? 
Um, and then there could even be a little bit side trail that could come off part of that that maybe goes this way, comes behind here, comes back in there. So that that could be lit up. You see how the composition is developing very quickly. You get and you can have some rocks in here. You can have some like different sized posts in here that are getting hit by light as well. In fact, let's just do that. Let's just draw right over that section. And I'll imagine it's nighttime and there's a moonlight coming over there. So now that I sketched that in, I'm just going to take my lasso tool and just go right over what we just did. Imagining all these little like push ends, little shapes. Up in here. Okay, so I get some of that in. Let me put a little bit of... What I thought of doing was this really quick is... Hold on, let me hide it. I want to put two layers. And... That's light and gray. Light's coming down and it's hitting part of that. Light's maybe moving over, coming across here. There you go, hitting part of that road like that, right? What I did real quick is I put a darker layer underneath. So if I hit move, and move it aside, it could look like part of the shadow and then I could dull it down and erase part of it. So it, it's like the shadow side. Then you could get in and paint some of that. Now you know where your light's coming from. So if it's gonna make those little areas pop in there, right? What was this shape back here? That round shape, is that like a tree? I never forgot about, oh, it's maybe part of the barn. I didn't realize that and I cut it out and I shouldn't have done that, which is okay. Okay, so It's actually not too bad like that. Because then what I could do is I could come in here if that white's hitting there, it allows me to think of, let me, let's start with a little bit of darks in here. Okay. Allows me to think of what part of the ground might be doing that's not getting hit. Might be a little bit darker here. It could be fading off a little bit, a little bit darker back in there. So now that I have that highlight on there and then I have a little bit of light trickling through, 
know, I shouldn't have erased that one part of the... Let me fix that part real quick. Actually, I can do this. Take, take my tool and erase this. that other little side there okay so what I would do to get more of that night feel then so you see can you feel how the light would be coming from the side then problem is is the sky is too the the, the ground and the foreground and everything is nice because lights coming to us and it's gonna get lighter but the sky would have to be a lot a lot darker so I'm gonna come over to my shadow area really quick and let me just make a quick selection on top of this and I'm gonna try to put in more of a night scene so I'm going to punch up my values quite a bit. I'm just going to come in here and lightly sort of drop down and put a little bit more of that haze coming down, especially back here. Because remember, this is closer, so the light's going to change part of that background. But back by this tree, and back in here, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a little bit darker. Actually, even part of that hill could start to fade into part of that. A little bit more, OK. So now I start to get that feel a little bit more like definitely there's sunlight or something, not sunlight, excuse me, moonlight, or, or it could be a car light coming on. It's casting across right here. And then what I would do next is I'd come back over here in a part of my lights, and I haven't addressed anything here. Let me just draw on it like it's the paint by number, right? So if you have light coming in this direction now, I could have these tombstones being hit with some light. Um, I could have some of this could darken up, it could be darker here and as we go this way it's a little bit lighter, mid light and then gets darker darker because we're receding away from the light source so everything gets dictated by that one primary light source that I get in there and remember I haven't even put in other you know if that's really bright I might have in here shadows casting off from the rocks and part of that fence maybe part of the house has a shadow, that tree might have a little bit of a shadow in there okay so let me just nudge a little bit more. And then the la one of the last things I was going to do that I felt would look really cool in here because of the nighttime scene and the sky that you have is coming back in here. And where does it go? I used to have a cool snow brush. There it is. And it does snow and stars. But you have to erase a couple for the stars. So if I come back over and we go into a white like this and we make this guy a little bit smaller. Actually, you could do a winter scene, but like snow coming in. Actually, why don't I just do this? This is actually a little bit easier. That's more of a snow brush. I used to have a good star brush that would do stars. This is a great way to do stars. You create a separate layer. And you just come in here and put one little ding, boom, like that. And then you put a little bit of a haze on it, just very lightly, just like that. Select all, copy, paste. Okay, move another one up there. Maybe shrink that guy down a little bit. Okay, and then what I do is then select that, copy, paste that guy. Maybe move one. Where'd it go? So there. Okay, and then I'll merge all three together. Select all, copy, and paste. So now I have a little grouping of them. And then I'll scale those down, make them look like they're further in the back little bit and I'll dull them down a little bit more. The memory is still in the computer of the paste so then I'll paste again. And then it's just luck of random. Photoshop happens to throw them out somewhere where you like them like that. You know, paste it again. Okay, so now I'm getting that sort of starry night feel and then I would just come in here and we have to render out all these other, I think I accidentally, what did I do with those other highlights? They're now, they're now dull. I wonder if, did I delete them by accident? Anyway, you remember the highlights I had there, right? Let me find out what I did with them. There was the shadow. What happened to them? Layer 5. That was the overlay. Um, here, let's do this. Select all, V. 
Nope, won't do any selection on that layer. It's too too light to pick that up. Um, let me duplicate it. Switch it. <sighs> Wonder what happened to that layer. Okay, there we go. And let's go to levels. I think I merged it and flattened it by accident. Yeah, I did. I merged it into part of the shadow layer. So I was going to come back here and try to get some of your highs really quickly back on there. had a bunch of highs there that I liked and I guess I accidentally I didn't even know how I did that maybe I was merging layers I deleted them really quick there I was trying to get a couple highs back really fast so what I would do from this point I would come in here and then really start to focus on part of the, the light hitting here going across part of this road blending into part of this field okay and, and then if you wanted to, I'm even tempted to put like a little bit of a moon here in the corner. You know, like it's that starry night. Or the moon could even be in the back further. Because if the moon was even back here, just really light, it could still work quite a bit. Give me a minute here. Let me fix this. I'm sort of pissed. I don't, pissed off. I don't know how I got rid of those. The light's in there. I'm just I'm working away and not focused. Let me just paint a couple in really quick. You're going to have some really nice highlights hitting some of this. And the way part, of, even the part of that structure comes down is going to get hit. There could be wood beams in there. They're going to be hit at like different angles. Part of that trail might come over here a little bit more. Curve itself around. Might be edges on that barn. You might have a little window open, a little side door, right? Be a side of the barn, might be more in shadow right here. I'm just trying to get a little bit more of like back here in the ground where that light's going to be gradating, sort of changing positions a little bit because of the way the light's coming through. And have a dark side to part of that tree, right? So even though they're they're rough round shapes, they are cylinder based, and you need to think of them as okay, that's going to be shadow. That's going to be shadow, and then you might even have your branches are covered by all of them, so they're going to be a little bit darker. They might start to fade in a little bit. Then if we come back here, I 
Now I'm thinking about how are these little specks going to hit. I'm just sort of painting it in, but then I could go in, add a little bit more. Now I, I could also have this area in the front here. Might be some gradients on like one side. And then as we come back over to the other side here, I might see a little bit change in the form. Some dark coming from behind here from the plants, right? Because that's a lot of that's going to be in shadow, but very sort of subtle. There, you see how that's building in there? Okay, so like I'm already starting to get a nice soft feel of light coming in that side and sort of spreading, right? And I haven't even got to this other side here that's going to be a little bit darker and have more of a gradient to it. Actually just going over that, see what the darks against the lights do? It creates a little bit of that mud feel like part of the environment sort of started breaking up a little bit and there's like dirt around part of this. Erasing a little bit. We came down a little too bright there. Okay, so you see that soft spread starting to happen. Feel it. So I, if I were to spend another, another 20 minutes on there, I'd really get that feel of light coming across there. And um, even if you wanted to, I mean, it, I, you could put a light ray or two, but I don't like doing light rays because I think it's already working. We got a sense that there's something coming from there. I think the only thing that I would do, what I mentioned earlier, is I might come in here and just add some form of a of a moon or something coming from the back let me get my moon brush there um maybe that could be sort of cool no that does one side let me take a look real quick so if i come in here and let me bring that down quite a bit where it go my cap lock Okay, what happened to the brush? It disappeared on me. There it is. Stay there, please. And go smaller. And let's say I'm thinking somewhere in the corner, like that. And then I could rotate it a little bit in there. filter I might go and just put a little bit of a Gaussian on it not that much just a teeny bit like that so it blurs a little bit of the center I'm just curious what if I drop down the opacity just a teeny bit so it sits back there you know what I mean so it's a soft sort of moon and I could punch it up a little bit more but I think that gives you a good starting point to light that scene okay and put you on that path and your decision on the moon I'm actually thinking that that might be a little bit gray, so I'm just wondering what if I duplicated it right now, made it a little bit brighter, what would happen? You know, would that give the feeling that that moonlight's sort of streaming across? The other thing too that you could use to advantage right now are clouds. 
if moonlight's coming down from above, you can put clouds in there and you can darken the base of the clouds. So what you could do really quick is come in like this. It's actually a pretty efficient way to do it. Um, and then you can adjust it a little bit. You can take, let's do a cloud. Let's try this guy right here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put down a little bit of a darker rendition of this cloud, like that. And you know what's funny, just putting that dark cloud down, you see what it did? It just sort of immediately separated part of the sky and the, I actually sort of like that. That to me is a little bit of a, what I would call like a happy accident. You see how it, see how it separated the sky a little bit? made the sky a little splotchy like I sort of like that a little so actually I'm gonna keep that that was just happy little accident in there and then I'm gonna put another layer up on there let's go back to the brush this time I'm gonna come in here darken a couple spots like this because one thing about clouds is clouds have dark spots under them so if you take a dark spot like that put a layer up on the top that's white okay and if you come in here and then just sort of lightly press down on parts of your cloud. That's how you make a really convincing sort of cloud. You see it has that little bit, and hold on, I'm gonna blend it in a little bit in just a minute here. So let me grab these two layers. You see how that feels more convincing? Because it has a dark shadow. Clouds always have a dark underside to them. So I can take that cloud now on a separate layer I can scale it down so I can come in here and sort of fit it where I maybe I want to squash it a little bit might get it up about there for a lap part of it in here it's a little dark so look I can just drop down the opacity on it actually not the white part let's keep that let's go to the shadow part there it is I'm gonna drop down the opacity on it there see it still acts as a little bit of a cloud and then this other layer that I had underneath here what I'm gonna do is drop that down a little bit more so the cloud reads a little, okay? And let me duplicate those. Let's see if I can save some time and maybe I bring it into another part of the piece. I can still fit another guy in there, right, you know? So that's, I'm going to stop right there because I want to go too much further, but I think that's on a good start and gives you a good feel for what you could do with that. And that's just one option. You could also, what if you put lights in there? Put a couple lights in front of the barn. Or what if the, the barn, the, the church, what if the front door of the church is open? And, you know, it's like a, there's light coming out, pouring out from the center, like maybe there's a mass or something, you know, something like that could also work as well, okay? All right, any questions? Nope. You guys are good. All right, I'm going to stop it there and I'll render it out. Thank you.